Hi everyone, um, Megan here, and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. As you can see, this is my Jane Austen, um, her life, her, her times, her novels by Janet Todd, and I talked briefly about this in another video of my July reads. Uh, I'll link that below. Um, so I wanted to do like a little flip through of this book and just show you like, I guess like a mini reading vlog of just this book because it's a beautiful book. It's got some of her original letters in there. It's got, um, yeah, some of her original manuscripts in her hand, like obviously a scan of the original. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys. And I found this book in a used bookstore in Hawaii, actually, on vacation for $5. So it was a very, very good find. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys what's inside. I'm on the table of contents and I already have something that I want to talk about. Look at this picture. It, okay, spoiler, 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 spoiler for Sense and Sensibility. Here is a drawing of um, John Willoughby and Eleanor Dashwood. And it's so funny that the little, like, some inscription here says, Miss Dashwood, I entreat you to stay. And yeah, okay, that's the line, true. But I never picture Willoughby with that jawline and with that funny hair and I never picture Eleanor with those red eyes and that hair either like well I mean that's looking like late 1700s this is early 1800s and fashion changed greatly during that time um, because of uh, the French Revolution uh, a lot of outrageously fancy um, uh, styles went out because people wanted to look more plain more like the common folk because they didn't want to get their heads chopped off. So anyway, I thought that picture was just so funny. Not at all how I picture Willoughby and Eleanor's um, uh, confrontation there at the end. I love that scene. One of my favorites. So wish that Emma Thompson hadn't cut that out of her version, but I do love that version as well. So yeah. Jane Austen lived just before photography made the world seem black and white. She has become synonymous with the color, fantasy, and romance of the Regency period, which she so brilliantly portrayed. There she is, Jane Austen. All in all, the Austens were reasonably placed socially and financially on the edge of the gentry rather than securely within their ranks. The nuances, concerns, and anxieties of this middling class would become Jane Austen's a special subject. Yes, she does, she does, like, there's a reason why she's so good at it. It's because she lived it. I love this illustration from uh, Northanger Abbey. Uh, by uh, Hugh Thompson from the 1897 edition of Northanger Abbey, it says there at the bottom. Um, but I love this drawing. Um, it's of Catherine Morland and John Thorpe, and John Thorpe is so irritating. He's, he's driving recklessly. You can kind of see the way the horse is moving. There's like a kind of a look in the horse's eye, and it's looking a little bit worried, and, and he's, he's got his whip out. He's using it on the poor horse, and and John Thorpe is like, oh, so, so, um, what's this book you're reading? Because it's Udolpho, it's a wonderful book. And he goes, oh, I haven't heard of it. I only read Mrs. Radcliffe. And Catherine goes, oh, but Udolpho is Mrs. Radcliffe. And he's like, oh, well, I guess I forgot about that. He's, yeah, he's just really irritating in my opinion. But at this exact moment, he's driving past the Tilneys here. And yeah, Catherine was supposed to go hang out with the Tilneys, and John Thorpe is like, nope, you're going for a ride with me. And it's, yee, he's irritating. This is her cousin Eliza. Now, I can't pronounce her French last name. Eliza, it's right there. Eliza Defoid. I have no idea. Um, and uh, she apparently was very flirtatious and a, maybe a little bit immoral and... Um, she married a Frenchman who actually was guillotined. Um, yeah, he was guillotined. And all this time she's flirting with her cousins, with Jane's, Jane's brothers. In particular, she flirted with James and Henry. And uh, even though Henry's the younger brother, even though he looks older, because that portrait came from later in his life. And she did actually marry Henry, even though they were like 10 years apart. She was 10 years older than him. So it was interesting to hear about how like Lady Susan and Mary Crawford and even a bit of Elizabeth Bennet could have been based on Eliza. So it's very interesting to me.
Here's some of the pullouts. We have what looks to be a manuscript. I can't really read it. Um, I love the handwriting, but it's a little bit difficult for me to read. I see the word Emma there. So this could either be talking about the Watsons or Emma. Um, I'm guessing it's talking about the Watsons because this section I'm reading about is when she was in Bath and she began writing the Watsons when she was in Bath. Funny thing is that the main character is Emma Watson, and I thought, oh, wouldn't that be so fun if they do did what they were doing with Sanditon, which is to turn it into, like, like a modern adaptation. Sorry, not a modern adaptation. An adaptation, and have Emma Watson play Emma Watson. <laughs> Here is The History of, Eng of England by a partial prejudiced and ignorant historian, Jane Austen's words sit by a partial prejudiced and ignorant historian. Now, I love how here they have drawings that Cassandra did of the different monarchs. And one thing that I read about um, somewhere else is that um, it's most likely that these monarchs are actually portraits of her family. So um, she really hated Elizabeth I. I don't really understand why. So like here, this picture of Elizabeth I, she looks quite like hideous and terrifying. Apparently this is like a caricature of their mother that Cassandra drew and this is a caricature of Jane as um, Mary Queen of Scots because she loved Mary Queen of Scots and so that's pretty funny too. Um, they've just discovered this in recent years that these are most likely portraits of her family. And then we've got this table of contents here for her juvenilia. At some point, she copied out all her juvenilia into three volumes, and she, um, you know, gave them a table of contents, page numbers. This is Lady Susan, letter one. So this is like the first page of Lady Susan. Um, yeah, it's so great, it's so good. And then, yeah, so that's the first letter signed S. Vernon, as in Susan, Lady Susan. Now this is a letter written by um, George Austen, so Jane's father, and on the back you can see. It says, um, Father's Offering Pride and Prejudice, was, which was declined by return. So, isn't that interesting? Then we've got here a marriage certificate. And it's funny, I cannot even tell who the marriage certificate is for. It looks like Henry, so I'm thinking her brother Henry. But, like, it's so hard for me to actually read that. Um, yeah, that does say 1007. I think he was married in 1798 or something. So, yeah is that famous drawing of Jane Austen, the only one of her from, of her face, like from the front. Of course, her sister Cassandra did it, and this little blurb at the bottom is quite interesting. Cassandra's sketch of her sister, the only authenticated portrait of Jane Austen's face. After Jane became famous, the picture was much prettified and softened with ribbons and frills. In one version, a wedding ring was added which is ridiculous, obviously, because Jane Austen never married. I thought I'd share with you some of these descriptions in this book um, by contemporaries of Jane Austen. So it says, The author Mary Russell Mitford repeated what her mother had told her of young Jane being the prettiest, silliest, most affected husband-hunting butterfly, and how a friend declared she had stiffened into the most perpendicular, precise, taciturn piece of single blessedness that ever existed. Bitford went on, A wit, a delineator of character who does not talk, is terrific indeed. I think I'd like to live in this place. Like, look at all those books. There's like a second floor up there in the ceiling and there's like the desk that goes all the way around oh just looks amazing okay so i opened up another one of these um envelopes and we have some more goodies here so this is a poem um that jane austen wrote around the time that sense and sensibility was published and it is um she was inspired to write it by an, um, a notice in a newspaper that a Mr. Gill was marrying a Mrs. A Miss Gill. So that's what that is. I just love seeing her handwriting and seeing her, you know, crossing certain things out and, and making adjustments. It's just so fun. Like, I, I almost want to, like, actually, I could. I could photocopy this and make a really fun collage. Actually, that's a good idea. Um, so there's that. Let's see what this is. 
Pride and Prejudice, a novel by Jane Austen. This is the first edition. I haven't looked at this myself yet. Let's see. 1833, so not the first edition. 20 years off to the first edition. That's Lizzie talking to Mr. Bennet then, telling her that Mr. Darcy has basically saved Lydia. And look at that Victorian outfit. That is a lot how... Um, how Queen Victoria dressed at the beginning of her reign, although this is the 1833 edition, so pre-Victorian. Um, but, you know, 1837 is when Victoria um, ascended the throne, and she did dress similarly to that. <laughs> oh, here's another fun picture. This is not to be born, Miss Bennet. So that's obviously Lady Catherine de Bourgh and Lizzie. Pride and Prejudice, a novel by Jane Austen. Yes. Oh, that's so fun. I love seeing that. That's so pretty. I should definitely make a collage. I'll photocopy this and make a collage. I don't know why I didn't think of it earlier. Let's see. What is this now? Uh, a letter to Cassandra. Okay. So a letter to Cassandra. Nice. Too bad I can't read it very well. I can return the compliments. Let's see, what does that say? I, I can return the compliment by thanking, you, by thanking you for the something pleasure of your letter. Yeah. They wrote letters like text messages back then or emails or, you know, any kind of messaging. Like, they just wrote all the time. Um, you know, like every day. They were apart for a couple days. They would write letters. I just think that's wonderful. Now, this is a map of some kind. Is this Bath, or what is this? City of Bath. Yes, it is. A new and correct plan of the City of Bath from a recent survey. I actually have been to Bath. I loved it. I would love to spend more time there. Um, and, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. And I, even just looking at this map, I was like, this seems like Bath. Let's see, what is this? Let's see if I can unfold it with my one hand. Comforts of Bath. So there they are in the, is that the pump rooms or what is that? I've been to the pump rooms as well and drank the water there. I've taken the waters. Actually, I've not taken the waters. I didn't go in the baths, but I did drink some of the water and it tasted like blood because it had a very irony taste to it. So that was, I'm glad I did it, had that experience. And this is this cool this cool painting they're talking about Marianne and Eleanor in this chapter and um these are these are not Marianne and Eleanor but they are Elizabeth and Mary Lindley daughters of composer Thomas Lindley the sisters were both promising musicians but sadly died young and um of course this is kind of what Marianne and Eleanor would have looked like when Jane Austen wrote Sense and Sensibility the first time when it was called Eleanor and Marianne in the 1700s, but then by the time it came out, they would have looked more like the movie adaptations that we see.